Hello everybody and welcome along to this video which is Mr Johnson Teaches Lady Macbeth Character Revision. A video going over some of the basics and some of the important points to do with the character of Lady Macbeth as part of your revision for Macbeth the play. As always with my videos it says at the bottom there you'll need to be ready to pause this video to make notes for your own revision that's always really important so at the end of watching this video you have something to go away with something to look back on and revise from. Watching it's important but actually it doesn't do much on its own. So Lady Macbeth is part of the play Macbeth of course and that is part of your GCSE English Literature. Now you will find this question as part of Paper 1, Section A and normally that would be the first exam that you sit for your English Literature or Language. So we're going to move on then and look at the character. So who is she? Well quite simply Lady Macbeth is married to Macbeth. He is her husband, she is his wife and he is the Thane of Glams. So an important nobleman, he would have had a certain amount of power Power, looking after part of the country on behalf of King Sco of King Duncan, excuse me, King Duncan living in Scotland. I was going to say there. Second bullet point: she is definitely a strong-minded, persuasive, and ambitious character. You might be able to use the word manipulative with her as well. I think that's a very key word for her. And I've put there: she could be seen as an antagonist. Very much the protagonist is the character you identify with. Often simply put as the good guy, and an antagonist antagonizes, causes problems for, or changes changes some way the protagonist and while she's not working against her husband she certainly antagonizes him so she's certainly got an unfamiliar role near the bottom there her actions certainly lead to her demise we can see how ultimately when she dies at the end of the play it's very much a consequence of the what she has chosen to do during the play along with her husband and some key vocabulary for you in that last bullet point then words you could use for her well definitely cunning would be a good one dominant absolutely she's very determined and then also i've used that phrase but her mind deteriorates by the end of the play she really is uh, somebody who is a shadow of her former self she she really has um, suffered the consequences of what she's done so that's who she is but what does she do well here it is the question on the right hand side as well is does she change so we'll look at that in a second again fabulous screenshot taken from one of my favorite versions of uh, Macbeth and there she is covered in blood so on the left hand side then so after hearing the witch's prophecies um, which her husband has written to her about she conjures up spirits asking them to give her the power to remove her feminine qualities that would allow her to do what it takes to convince her husband to kill, kill the king which is an evil thing so she almost feels that she's too gentle and good and almost needs the help of these dark agents to help her she certainly then goes on to manipulate her husband into committing the murder he is uncertain she is very much certain that it should be done and therefore she manipulates and convinces him following the murder of the king she's the one who takes control Macbeth is very much almost traumatized by the blood on his hands and can't continue and won't go back and, tr and put the daggers back in the murder scene she's the one who does that she takes control and very much seems to be the more strong of the two characters Further down then there's a banquet scene where Macbeth and Lady Macbeth hold a banquet once Macbeth has become the king. Uh, he sees Banquo's ghost at this because he's had Banquo murdered. She then takes control of this situation, tries to calm everything down and convince people it's nothing to worry about whilst Macbeth is visualising this ghost and completely losing control. That really is one of her final moments. That takes place during the middle of the play in Act 3, Scene 4. Uh, it's revealed that she and Macbeth are struggling to sleep and unable to sleep following the murder of King Duncan almost like they're shaken I think the phrase more or less from the play is that they are shaken nightly almost uh, these nightmares happening every single night she visualizes blood on her hands in act 5 scene 1 moving towards the end of the play she comes on sleepwalking because she's unable to sleep so she's almost like she's awake and talking her thoughts and she seems to be utterly traumatized by what's happened to her and finally she dies off stage at the end she gets a very uh, almost low-key unimportant ending almost like she gets what she doesn't deserve um, because of what she's done anyway moving on then so does she change the question there well yes absolutely at the beginning she's this strong character almost willing to conjure up spirits and she takes control of the situation after the murder of the king but finally by the end she's almost overwhelmed by these these experiences these visions and also the guilt that the blood represents that's on her hands so some key quotes, again, you could put down so many quotes of Lady Macbeth. She's a fabulous character, 
but I've tried to reduce it down to a few which cover different parts of the play. So like her first appearance in Act 1, Scene 5 there, when she says, Come, you spirits, and unsex me here, removing those feminine qualities. Now just remember that you do not need to remember every quote word for word. For that first quote, you could talk about how Lady Macbeth talks to spirits, and she asks them to unsex her and just quote the bits that you can remember unsex remove those feminine qualities and the imperative there she's commanding them come you spirits so it makes her seem very strong and in control next one down then when she's trying to convince her husband this is a great quote because it's a theme of the play where you talk about things that appear like one thing but actually are something very different i use that word duplicitous which means that exact thing looking like one thing being another she says to her husband, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. So again, appear innocent, but actually be the dangerous thing hiding beneath the surface. She then convinces him when he's decided that he doesn't want to proceed and kill the king because of all the consequences. She manipulates him, insults him, uh, and ultimately says to him, when you durst do it, so when you dared to kill the king, then you were a man. At the minute, you are not being a man because you're going back on your promise to me. After the murder in the middle there, these quotes, by the way, all has in brackets, it says who said them, and the numbers are which act and which scene they are. So the quote I'm now looking at, my hands are of your colour, and yet I shame to wear a heart so white, is a quote from Lady Macbeth in Act 2, Scene 2. That's following the murder of King Duncan, and it's the fact that although she's got blood all over her hands, she still feels innocent, almost unaffected by what's in front of her, the murder of an innocent person who is their king, and yet she feels that her heart is pure and white, as she says there. She also says immediately after my next quote down, a little water clears us of this deed. Now, if you've watched my Macbeth video, or if you haven't, do watch it, but one of the quotes I put on there is very much the antithesis, or the contrast to that, when he says, will all great Neptune's ocean wash this blood clean from my hand? That's contrasted and juxtaposed with her just saying, a little water clears us of this deed. She goes on to say, how easy is it then? However, I've then got a quote from near the very end of the play, which is Act 5, Scene 1, when she's visualising this blood on her hands. She says, out damn spot, out I say, and she can't remove this blood. She's scrubbing, 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 and yet she still sees this spot, this irritating spot of blood, which just reminds her of her terrible actions. And ultimately, it's a representation or a symbol of the guilt that she feels after the killing of the king, and it's guilt that she can't get rid of. So that very much contrasts to the quote just above it on my screen there, a little water clears of this deed. Well, clearly it doesn't, because you can't get rid of the guilt in your own mind. And she goes on to say beneath that, all the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. Arabia is a place, a part of the world, which is very much known for its scents and its perfumes. And yet she feels this hyperbole that all of the perfumes in this place still won't make the smell of blood disappear from her hand. You could use that quote as well, because earlier in the play, Macbeth, after the murder of the king, said, will all great Neptune's oceans wash this blood from my hand? So you've got both the characters reacting to the blood on their hands. However, he almost is weak at the beginning and becomes stronger. She is very strong and becomes weaker. And that's how those two characters could be seen very much to be, in some ways, opposites of each other. I put a final quote down there at the bottom from the same final scene of hers, which is said by the Doctor, and it's just really good to reflect the message of this play, which is, unnatural deeds do breed unnatural troubles. So doing unnatural things, like killing the king, breeds or creates unnatural troubles, which is what she's facing. This sleepwalking and this vision of blood that she can't get rid of on her hands is an unnatural trouble, but it's almost pointing out to us, the audience, that this is a consequence of the things that she's gone and done. The murders which she has been a part of have caused her to have these unnatural troubles, which includes sleepwalking, not being able to sleep, and so forth. So I won't talk any more about those. Instead, let's just have a look at some themes that you could maybe link her with. So these are just some ambition I've put there because she very much is ambitious for her and her husband. They're definitely a team, I would say, rather than just her manipulating him for her own benefit. She wants him to receive the benefits as well. Other ones I've put there include that word duplicity again. What that means is being two-sided, really, duplu, like duplicate, copying something, being two. You've also got the guilt, of course, which is represented, as we've seen by her just then, with the blood on her hands. And also I've put the final one, the consequences. 
So that guilt she sees, that vision of blood, that, that losing sleep and not being able to sort of rest her mind. All of these are themes that you might expect to be able to link her with, but I've put others there as well to go away and have a look at yourself. So what else could you say about Lady Macbeth? Well, loads. I've already mentioned that she acts like an antagonist in this play, but let's not forget as well, she also helps to break the great chain of being through her manipulating her husband into murdering people who are more powerful than him and him trying to take their place. That is him trying to move up the great chain of being. I won't explain it any more here. There is another video on my channel I thoroughly recommend you checking out if you don't know what I mean by the great chain of being. You really, really want to. It's how you can push your responses in exam questions onto the highest marks. In the middle there, her actions as a female, let's not forget this, her actions as a female at this time would have been really unusual and also deeply concerning to the audience. It's not that women couldn't be powerful, but certainly this is a society where there were expectations of women and how they would behave, and Lady Macbeth manipulating her husband is very much breaking out of that expectation or that convention of the time. Through her, there, there, we've got her consequences. We see that loss of sleep, as I've said, the hallucinations of blood on her hands, which represent the guilt. And also, I've put the bottom there, I would suggest to you, she almost acts like temptation. And she makes allusions, references to the serpent, which is like the story from the Bible, the Adam and Eve story. So it's almost like she's tempting her husband and like Adam and Eve were tempted into taking the fruit that they weren't meant to in the Garden of Eden, they receive consequences and we see what happens where Macbeth and Lady Macbeth give in to temptation, take the fruit or the crown and then are punished for taking what was not rightfully theirs. So here's some possible exam questions. Again, you might want to pause this just to have a look. The top three are either sample questions or real questions which have come up, as you see, in brackets in the last few years. The bits in the brackets that I've put there, like 5-1 at the top, that's they would have printed the extract for you. So the top question was an absolutely brilliant one for November 2020, talking about her who changed, as a character who changes, which she absolutely does. Um, there are other ones there which you could have a go at. That's the next stage of revision I definitely recommend as well. Putting a timer up, giving yourself 15 minutes or 20, half an hour, or even have a go at the full timing, which would be 50 minutes, and practice a question writing about in the beginning how the character appears and using a quote which you analyse. Look at them towards the middle, is there a change? And finally, contrast them at the beginning with them at the end as your paragraph and see what, see what progression that character has made. So as a final point then, you can have a quick look at these recap questions just to check your own understanding of this video. But ultimately, I want to say thank you very much for watching. Of course, you may have noticed there are multiple videos across my channel which deal with all different aspects of literature and language. Otherwise, all I will do is say thank you very much. Consider subscribing if you haven't already, just because then you'll get some more of my videos as they're created. But overall, I want to say thanks for watching and I wish you the very best of luck when it comes to you and your exams. Thank you and goodbye.